Now, I love to eat stuffed shells, but I don't like to make them because there's so many components. Besides the sauce, you have the shells themselves. You boil them until they're super fragile, and then you gotta fill them with a cheese mixture. It sounds good once it's all together, but in practice, it's pretty messy. So I like to call on a friend like <laughs> Joya, who's gonna make them for us. That's right. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, I found really simple stuffed shells recipes. So simple, you didn't stuff the shells at all. Really? You boiled them, and then you kind of stirred in all the ingredients you would have stuffed them with and put them in the oven. It's called unstuffed shells. Huh. Quite clever, but not what we were after. We wanted the traditional style, but we wanted it to be easier. So we're gonna start with our homemade tomato sauce, which comes together in a snap. Here I have two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and I'm heating it up in this saucepan over medium heat and you can see it's just beginning to shimmer. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add one chopped onion, which is about a cup of chopped onion. I'm also gonna add half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. I'm just gonna let this cook for about 10 minutes or so until the onions are softened and lightly browned. While this cooks away, let's come down here and talk about the filling. Now, traditional fillings are always based around ricotta and we're not gonna change that. Here we have 10 ounces of whole milk ricotta. If we're gonna add a few more cheeses just to add some texture and flavor. And so first cheese up, four ounces of shredded fontina cheese. And I'm gonna add two ounces of grated pecorino romano cheese. I'm also gonna add two eggs to the filling and the eggs really work as a binder to help that filling stay cohesive as it cooks. And it also makes the shells easier to fill. Some fresh chopped basil. The good stuff. Mm-hmm, not dried basil. And this is three tablespoons fresh garlic, and I just have two cloves. I'm gonna press it right into the bowl. I love using a garlic press. I know, you're a presser. <laughs> I am, because it just makes it so easy. And it crushes the garlic nicely so you get all the flavor. I'm also gonna add a little bit of dried oregano. This is a teaspoon. Now I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of table salt. And last but not least, this is an unusual ingredient. This is cornstarch, hmm. a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch. It helps absorb any liquid that comes out of the filling during cooking, but it also helps make that filling be nice and silky. All right, so we're just gonna stir this all together until it's nice and evenly combined. All right, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna put this into a disposable piping bag. That's just gonna make it really easy to stuff the shells later on. Now, if you didn't have one of these, you could use a large zipper lock bag in much the same way. And I haven't cut the tip yet. All right, so we're just gonna set this aside until we need it later. Now back here at our onions. So you can take a look at these onions. And they're nice and soft and lightly browned. That's gonna deliver a lot of flavor to our otherwise fairly simple sauce. Next ingredient in is Garlic, more garlic. This is six cloves, and again, I'm just gonna use the garlic press to squeeze them right into the pot. All right, so that's six cloves of garlic. In addition to the garlic, we're gonna add a little bit of heat. This is a quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. We're just gonna let the garlic and pepper flakes cook for about 30 seconds until it's nice and fragrant. Next up, this is a big 28 ounce can of tomato puree, which we liked because it has a very smooth texture. Now, surprise for you, we're gonna add water, a lot of water. This is two cups of water, and I know it doesn't make sense now because I'm making a very watery sauce, but I'm making it watery on purpose. And last but not least, just a teaspoon of sugar to take the edge off those tomatoes. We'll just bring this up to a simmer and then turn the heat down to medium low and let it cook for about five minutes until all of those flavors melt. This sauce has been cooking for five minutes, and you can see it's a little on the loose side. Mm -hmm. That's because I added the water. And the reason I added the water is because we didn't pre-cook these shells. They're still hard right out of the package. That makes them easier to fill. And they're gonna cook through in the oven. This is 25 shells, and you can get this amount of shells out of one 12 ounce box. But when you open the box, you wanna go through them and look for shells that are nice and opened. Because that means it's gonna be easy to fill. You wanna discard or save for another use any of these that are enclosed. Gotcha. All right, so. 25 shells, we have the filling in a pastry bag. And I'm just gonna cut off the tip of the bag. So I'm just gonna fill them up partially, leave a lot of room on top so I can go back and add more filling as I have it. All right, got this last little bit of filling. Yeah. There we go. 25 perfectly filled shells. So now it's time to build the casserole dish. I'm just gonna take a cup of this sauce and put it right into the bottom of the dish, get things started. We'll spread this out nice and evenly. So this is a 13 by nine inch casserole dish. And now we're gonna start to layer the stuffed shells in the dish. And I want you to notice I'm putting these shells in the dish open side facing up. That's because when we put it seam side down, all the filling leaked out. And then it's not a stuffed shell. 
All right, so now I'm gonna gently pour the rest of this sauce right over the top of all the shells. Being careful to make sure it evenly gets over every shell, because again, that pasta is not cooked. So it all has to be covered with sauce so that it turns soft in the oven. All right, now we're gonna cover it with foil because we wanna trap the steam in the dish to help cook that pasta through. We're gonna put this dish on a rimmed baking sheet and it's gonna go into a hot oven, 400 degrees for 45 minutes. Can I help you out there? Thank you. All right, so you're ready to peek under the foil? Sure am. Oh, you can see it's still bubbling right there around the edges. Here I have eight ounces of shredded fontina. It's gonna melt over the top and look gorgeous and melty and a little bit browned. That's starting to look better, don't you think? Uh, yeah, already. <laughs> so this is gonna go back into the oven, same oven, middle rack, 400 degrees, for another 15 minutes until that fontina has melted and begun to get a little brown. Okay. Oh, that looks more like it. Right? That's better, isn't it? Uh, yes. Oh, goodness. What an improvement. Mm-hmm. We have to let this cool, obviously, for a little bit, about 25 minutes, okay. and then we can dig in. Sounds good. These shells have been cooling for 25 minutes, so it's time to eat. Huzzah. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna sprinkle it with a little more basil. This Beautiful. is just a tablespoon of chopped fresh basil. A little freshness. All right. Now, how many shells would you like? I will start with two shells, please. I'm gonna give you the corner. Yes. A middle shell. Oh. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, that's good. Very well seasoned, too. And a lot of stuffed shell recipes don't season enough, and you end up, it's just all watery. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. Pasta on its own doesn't have a lot of flavor. This is very cheesy and delicious. <laughs> well, I also love the doneness mm. of the pasta because when you make it the traditional way and you boil the noodles and then you put them in the oven for a while, they get really overcooked and mushy. This way, they're almost al dente. They still have some texture. And the filling is so creamy. Mm. Thanks to that cornstarch. This is smooth. It's almost buttery. Way to re-engineer that, that is perfect. Oh, thank you. You've gotta make these stuffed shells and it starts with a pretty thin sauce. And meanwhile, make a filling and then pipe the mixture into uncooked shells. Place the shells on top of some of the sauce, top with more sauce and bake. Top with more fontina and then bake it all until browned and serve. So from Cook's Country, the actually easy, cheesy stuffed shells. <laughs> They're good though, aren't they? They're really good. Just homey. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>